In today's sneak peek, I will reveal the next two districts, the new Flying Fortress, and answer many of your comments in the new update. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have sneak peek number two. If you guys missed yesterday's sneak peek, be sure to watch that video as I talked about how to earn the new capital gold in the forge, how to start a clan capital, the new defenses and troops within the first two districts, and much more. The link to that video will be down in the video description. Yesterday, we left off at the Wizard Valley, and today we will explore the two new districts, Balloon Lagoon and Builder's Workshop. In order to unlock the Balloon Lagoon, we must first unlock the Capitol Hall Level 4 inside the main Capitol Peak. But before we can do that, we have to continue to upgrade more buildings and traps to unlock the Capitol Hall Level 4. So let's upgrade these items so we can unlock the new district. While we are upgrading our buildings, I want to take this time to answer a comment left in the previous video. And remember to leave your questions down in the comment section below for a chance to be featured in an upcoming video. The first comment we have here is from VUserDude, and he asks, Will this mean that clans with more members be at an advantage to those with less? My answer is yes, in a way. Clans with more members will have the ability to earn capital gold faster and contribute to their clan capital. This will mean larger, but active, meaning they actually play and will be able to get to a maxed out state faster than those with less players. So keep that in mind. And Man Bear Pig had a similar question to this. And my answer is yes, as it will be a huge benefit to have an active 50 players in your clan for this. I'll be answering more questions throughout this video, so stay tuned for those. Now that we finished these buildings, let's upgrade our Capital Hall to level four. It's time to explore the Balloon Lagoon. The first thing we have unlocked are the Rocket Balloons. These are deployed in a group of two and have the same speed boost like their main village counterpart. The next troop we can unlock is by rebuilding the Skeleton Barrel Barracks, which now unlocks the new Skeleton Barrel Troop. This is an air troop that flies skeletons to its defensive target. This Skeleton Barrel can fly over lakes, and the moment it gets shot down, the skeletons drop on that spot. But you may be asking, what if the barrel pops in the middle of the lake? What happens to the troops? Well, the troops will actually disappear. Yes, they will be killed off if they land too far from any land. But if they are just close enough, then they will spawn on the land attacking the closest building. But the most important building within this district is the far left ruin, which holds the flying fortress yard. This is how you unlock the new troop called the flying fortress. District halls, which allows you to upgrade your buildings, which allows you to upgrade your capital hall. Whoa. I've never seen one of these up close before. Careful, son. Why? This fortress will take up to 100 housing space, and once it's destroyed, it will drop 22 skeletons. But we must upgrade more in order to unlock this ruin, so let's do that. But I have another comment here to answer while I upgrade. Sadish so asks, what advantage does a Town Hall 14 versus a Town Hall 6 get? The answer is, there's no advantage when it comes to attacking, but the advantage lies with the capital gold. If you're a Town Hall 6, you don't have any Forge crafting slots open, but if you are a Town Hall 14, you have all the crafting slots open. So a Town Hall 14 will be able to help craft capital gold and help upgrade the clan capital way faster than a Town Hall 6. So be sure to keep upgrading to unlock more Forge slots, Thanks for the question, Sadish. Now that our upgrades have finished, we notice we just unlocked the Builder's Workshop. I'll jump into that district a little later in this video. So if we upgrade our district hall to level two, we can now upgrade our Flying Fortress yard and unlock the new troop. When you deploy this new troop, it will fly to the closest defense and it will send out small skeleton gliders when it starts to get damage from air targeting defenses. Yes. It won't send out the skeleton gliders if it gets hit by air traps, but only defensive targeting the ship. So by just taking damage from a trap is not enough to activate the skeleton gliders. So that is a little unique feature for this new troop. But you can also unlock the lightning spell factory, which is next to the fortress yard, and it will give you the lightning spell, which only takes up one housing space. Lightning spells can be used to damage the district halls, but it's not even worth it since they do so little damage. The lightning spell's best value will be when you will be facing a single target inferno with your flying fortress in the future. It will reset the beam and allow your fortress to take it out. 
it won't even be worth it to take out defenses as you can see the amount of lightning required to take out certain air targeting defenses and it takes all seven maxed out to take out a maxed super wizard tower if i find more use cases for the lightning i'll be sure to let you guys know but now let's fly over to the builder's workshop notice the first thing unlocked is the raid cart the unique feature about the raid cart is that the four barbarians spawn on the corners when you deploy the troops so the cannon cart will not get targeted by any defenses until that first barbarian is killed but the two biggest items in this district will be the super pekka barracks on the left side and the frost bell factory on the right side well, like always, we have to upgrade our capital hall even more to unlock these new items. But the next comment I have here is from Chris, who asks, can you use a combination of raid medals to purchase a few troops or siege machine and then let your clan fill the rest? For example, if he wanted to use super archers, but no one in his clan has them unlocked, can he use raid medals just for those and then fill the rest of his CC from his clan? The answer is yes, you can. Thanks for your question, Chris. Now let's upgrade the district to level two. We can now unlock the Super Pekka Barracks, but we can't unlock the Frostbell Factory just yet. So let's take a look at this Super Pekka, which is similar to the one in the Builder Base. Hmm. You know what? Since the Super Pekka explodes, will that explosion act like a lightning spell and reset an Inferno Tower? Well, let's try it. So let's first drop our Flying Fortress to get hit by this single target Inferno. Now let's drop our P.E.K.K.A. So you see the Super P.E.K.K.A. died next to the Inferno Tower, but the single target Inferno was not reset and it took down our Flying Fortress. That's pretty good to know. Remember, if you have any questions about anything so far, be sure to leave your question in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe while you're doing that. Okay, let's go ahead and start upgrading again to be able to unlock the Frostbell Factory. But I've got another comment to answer while we do that. Vsock's comment was, how does this affect regular clan wars? Well, the answer is it doesn't. This has no influence on the other parts of the game other than in a way to spend your main loot to get capital gold and getting raid medals in return to use on the main village. Then Courtney asks, can you forge with just gold multiple times at different slots together? Yes, you can. You can use all the gold if you like, or all dark elixir or whatever resource you want for every slot. Each one is independent and has no influence on the other crafting slots. Thanks guys for your questions. Finally, we can unlock the frost spell factory. This new spell takes up to four housing space and it slows down defenses when used. It's not like a free spell completely stopping the defenses for a small time, but just slows them down. Also notice the duration states two attacks. So this spell will last for your whole attack and the very next attacker hitting the same base after you. So plan the hit wisely. This is the same case for the heal and the jump spells as well. But one cool feature of the frost spell is you can freeze the water and allow your ground troops to walk over the surface. It looks like the spell radius can freeze up to eight tiles from side to side. So keep that in mind if you're looking to freeze the water and walk across. But hold on, there is one smart move you could plan with your clanmate if you wanted. And that is to double freeze the water to walk over a larger area. Yes, you can drop your frost spell during your attack and then in the next attack, your clanmate can add to your frost spell to now allow his ground troops to walk over a huge distance. This will require extra planning, but it's definitely something to think about. Be sure to subscribe for more sneak peeks and check out these two videos about sneak peek number one and the secrets exposed in the dev video for more about this new update coming very soon.